Are you offsetting your own personal emissions yeah. with that? And what, can you give us a sense of the scale of that? Uh, it's you know, like 10 million a year. Okay. Uh, and, and just it's to be- It's a variety of things. The mm -hmm. Climeworks is part of it. You know, buying uh, electric heat pumps for low income housing where they mm -hmm. get the benefits of lower monthly bills and I'll, I take the carbon credits for those things. You know, there's uh, you know, solar panels. There's a, a huge variety of things. I don't use some of the uh, less proven uh, approaches. Such as? Uh, I don't plant trees. Uh. I mean, are we the science people or are we the idiots? I, which one do we want to be? Uh. <laughs> it was interesting because he referenced Climeworks and his massive amounts of money he gives them to offset his carbon footprint or invest in their technology. But really, the technology is nowhere near something that you could honestly prescribe to people as a meaningful thing to do for climate change. Or for ridiculous. That's not what it's for. That's not, it's not. It's not aimed at doing that. But, I mean, the people doing the actual technology work, the engineers working on it, that's how they may think about it. But the bigger, broader frame of it, Bill Gates doesn't think of it as something that can help us to address climate change. It's to help him feel that he's not the bad person that he actually is, that he and a small cohort of people like him are responsible for a very large proportion of the emissions. And then there's the next swathe down in terms of, if you looked at the sort of the priority order in terms of equity, the next sway down and responsible for another significant proportion of the emissions. And this group, of which, of course, many, many senior academics like myself are in, this group needs to find some way that we can maintain our status quo, our way of living. And we are fully aware that we can't do that through techniques that would actually work. So what we have to do is to evoke things that that we that actually in our in our quiet, honest moments we know cannot succeed at the scale that's necessary in the time frame we have. But we don't have many of those quiet moments. Most of the times we are desperately trying to delude ourselves and therefore others. And I think this is evident when you look at the numbers. People like Gates, who make some claim to have some been numerically cogent. I may question that. But um in 2021, I think the capture at a global level of carbon dioxide, capture and storage, let's be clear, capture and storage. There was lots of capture and release where we captured some carbon dioxide and we used it to push out more oil out of oil and gas reservoirs, enhanced oil recovery. That was about 45 million tonnes of capture and release, if you like. But that doesn't do anything for the climate, of course. The actual capture was about 7 million tonnes of carbon dioxide. That's under two hours of global CO2 emissions. Now that's after 20 years of the Gateses of this world being pushing that technology. So we captured, was it 0 0.0198, I think, percent of our CO2 emissions in 2021. And the Global CCS Institute said that if all of their plans come to fruition, then by about 2030, we might capture about 45 to 49 million tonnes, so about 0.1% of all of our carbon dioxide. And the bit that people like Bill Gates deliberately, I assume it's deliberate, I presume he's not stupid enough to not think about this, you know, deliberately miss out, is time. It's the time frame, the timeline that we have to deliver the changes that means these exotic technologies, whilst I would argue we should research and develop them and, and deploy them if they meet stringent, sustainability criteria, that's social and ecological criteria. If they meet those, it's fine, deploy them. But in terms of cutting our emissions, just cut our emissions as if these things do not work, because they will not work at scale in the time frame that we have to address the challenges that we face. You cannot roll these things out fast enough. And so it comes back to the fact is we've got to, we've got to do the things that we know how to do today which is what these people like Bill Gates want us to avoid, because that will mean things about his lifestyle, his norms, his expectations. And so I think there are, th th this narrative, going back to this narrative, this narrative and all these little bits of technologies for the future, I mean, geoengineering even more so, these are just storylines to maintain the status quo. That's all they are for most of the people involved. That's not to criticize the engineers working on these particular things. And I'd say, as I say, I'm not against doing some research and development, development into them, but you cannot in any way assume that these things are part of a response to climate change.
Maybe they will be in years to come. Maybe. But they may end up just proving to be far too little, far too late. So we have to start to respond using the things that we have available, the technologies, the policies that we have today. I think we're going fast enough to actually hit the targets that were set out in the Paris Agreement. No, we won't hit hit uh, no the aspirational targets. Well, you can do the math on 1.5 uh, and you know, even 2.0 uh, isn't that likely. Now, fortunately, if you stay below three, a lot of the ill effects that people have heard about don't happen unless you really are irresponsible and let it get up to the, the higher range. The Gates of this world, and I say I have, I have absolutely no interest in Bill Gates on climate change. I don't know why people focus on what he has to say. I mean, if I want to know about the abuse of monopoly powers with a sort of B-rated bit of software, I go to Bill Gates. If I want to know about any other facet of life, he knows no more about that than anyone else. So I have no interest in, in what he has to say there. And okay, people say he's made lots of money. Well, to me, you've got the Berners-Lee who effectively for free has in, in given us the internet. And you've got Microsoft who's made a fortune out of selling, well, whatever, however you may think of it, various levels of software. I know where the value is in those two. And uh, it's in the former, not the latter. Um, so I'm not interested in what he has to say on climate change. I'm not interested in what Schwarzenegger has to say on climate change or Musk. You know, any more than I am someone who works in my local butcher's shop or someone else who um, works behind the pub in my local village. I mean, I might listen to them. I might listen to Bill Gates. I mean, there's no, I, I, I don't know why we are privileging these people. Okay. And uh, it, worse than that, I think there's also something, and I wrote about this in the book, in, in the Greta Thunberg climate book, that you see when you see, if you go to like a cop, you'll see all the journalists and other sycophants following these people around. And I think we're giving them too much air. Um, you know, they are part of the problem. So let's discuss with them as being part of the problem. But let's not discuss with them about the solution space, it's not one that they have any comprehension of or indeed desire to try and respond to.